What's up guys, it's Rick with Better Terms Dreamworks. Back from a little mini vacation in Nashville. Have a good time. Trying to get a, get a few things caught up here in the shop. As promised, I got some more video footage for you guys with this Hummerbird Pro that belongs to um, my friend Rob. Got a lot of work to do on this thing. Uh, first things first, I've got to um, I got to deal with these frets. Now these, these frets need to be leveled. They, this get, the instrument's been played. Um, get you to zoom in here we've got we've got mama baritone doing the video work for us today so thanks to her but we've got some deep divots in here um especially right here that 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 bad boy right there kind of sets the he sets the the tone of where we're heading with this fret work because that's the deepest point on the frets themselves it's kind of hard to measure where we're at with that, but I'm I'm roughly estimating between twenty five and thirty thousandths with this tool. It's the best thing that I've found for measuring fret height. Um, I think we're around twenty seven, twenty eight thousandths here with that, which is low. It's the low end of what I what I would even consider messing with for fret leveling. In all honesty, I may end up. I may end up having to refret this guitar, which is not a big deal. We can handle that here. But uh, trying to save Rob some some money, and uh, I always try to take the most non-invasive approach to these things, and I treat them all individually. Every guitar is different. So anyhow, I'm gonna walk you through the the first few steps on this video of how we do that. First thing we gotta do, we gotta get this this neck as straight as level as we can get it using measurement tools. I've got a couple of straight edges here one that's notched uh, to go in between the frets and this one will go on the frets I, between the two i'll be able to accurately tell if it's if it's level or not so we've got to access the truss rod i've already off camera i've already loosened these screws up and admittedly um, it's pretty self-explanatory there now truss rod on the gibson you got to use a truss rod wrench um, the first Adjustment you make on any truss rod is to loosen, not tighten, the truss rod. So we're going to loosen it and make sure it's loose, and this one is. It's nice and loose there. Looks like it's adjusting just fine. So I'm going to find a place on these frets that seems pretty reasonably um, not worn, I guess is the, is the way to word it today. And I'm going to look at the gap between the straight edge and the fret and I'm going to watch that gap disappear as I tighten the truss rod to introduce a little bit of a back bow into the neck. This truss rod was loose, very loose. Almost there. Somebody's probably already questioning on pace. Why are you uh, why are you using a straight edge on frets that are not level? Well, that's part of the way we check. That's what these not straight edge is to confirm for me. I press it in here, and once I think I've got it, I confirm it with the not straight edge. So we are just that's it right there. That's where we want to be. And that's at the high end of the adjustment on that truss rod too. So let's confirm it here. Oh yeah, we're touching the fretboard all the way down. That's what we want. It's good. So the next thing is to uh, get the nut out. Now you can take the nut off before or after you, you make your truss rod adjustment, that doesn't matter. But the most important thing about this is, uh, especially with Gibsons, they use a nitro lacquer finish and um, they usually run the finish up on the nut. And I might be able to get a little light on this for you guys here. Let's see. Yeah. So like you wanna take a nice sharp X-Acto knife. I use a number 11 blade on mine, kind of my go-to blade for these tools and you score along the profile of the nut to break the lacquer loose like that all the way around all 
that in there. When I start feeling the blade slide up under the nut, it's time to pop the nut out. So this is a very sharp blade. Doesn't take much with it at all. Get it going. So got these neat little spatulas here that come in handy for this work. Yeah, this one's gonna slide up just fine. So slide that up under there and raise it up and out of there. Nice and clean. Didn't pull any wood fibers loose. Kind of they're really easy. That's good, that's what we want. So now we're ready to start prepping the fretboard for leveling. So stay tuned guys, there'll be more footage coming later. What's up guys, back again with this Hummingbird Pro. The uh, next step in the fret leveling process is to mask everything off to uh, get ready to level the frets with our leveling beams. I've got them prepared, I'll show those to you in a minute. But um, yeah, well the reason we wanna come this far out with the masking tape is because in the, the following step, after we get everything leveled, we'll be filing on the frets to, to crown them in, in this fashion here. Well, as that file passes over, and you roll in in that manner, you have the tendency for that edge of the file to get into the finish on the guitar. A little trick of the trade there. It'll save you some, some time and some money in finish repairs for anybody that's watching this video that may be getting ready to do this for themselves. But yeah, we come through here and we mask everything off. We try to keep it nice and neat as we go. And that's where we're at now. And the other thing, is the leveling beams. I have two different lengths. I have one that's really long as you can see and I have a short one here that's not so long. I use it to 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 sand in the fall away from the 12th fret on and fall away is um, just for comfort and playability of the higher registers. Kind of makes it easier to get those those cords up here Gives you a little more room for your setup work too, as well. But a um, little little leeway. But that's the big one, and that's what we're going to be using here. To it's just peel and stick, four hundred grit sandpaper. I buy it by the roll, you know. And it's a stainless steel beam. I've had machined, made, trued up, and I've got some masking tape stuck to it, so I can stick the peel and stick sandpaper to it. It'll come off easier. But we'll uh, we'll take a red sharpie and we'll mark all the frets, and we'll start moving the leveling beam across here. Then when it gets to the point to where um, I've got everything pretty much level with that divot right there, that's when we stop. When I start taking material off of that, we're done. We're we're, we're as low as we can go. And I'm gonna keep sending video your, your way on this as we get into this to see where how this turns out. But uh, yeah, that's where we're at, guys. So that's it for this part. We'll catch you in the next segment. Later. All right, guys, back again. The next step is to take a Sharpie of your choice. I used red. I like, to, I like red. I can see it better. And mark all these frets with, with the red Sharpie. That gives you a visual representation of the, you know, good visual um, of how much material you're actually removing when you're sanding on it with this leveling beam. And uh, that way you can keep up with your progress. And what I like to do starting out is I like to find the bad spot. In this case, it's the third fret there. And I like to kind of focus on that. So you know, I'll get somewhere over there and I let the tool do the work. I don't press down on this at all. I just, I just move it back. I'm literally just, just gliding over the frets. The weight of this, this thing has a, actually has a substantial amount of weight to it. It's pretty thick wall steel, so just make passes and we go back and forward.
Now, as you can tell, hopefully in the video there, actually let me take this thing out of the mouth and show you guys something really neat here. So, right through here, we're removing a lot of material. But this fret, these frets here, kind of hit and miss. That's just a, a good visual representation of just how unlevel these frets were. Because if you recall in the previous portion, I actually set this neck to level and the frets were showing to be level with a straight edge. So that shows you how important this that this work is to the instrument. It doesn't it's not something you can catch with your eyes, just a naked eye anyhow, but you can definitely feel it when you're playing an instrument that has unlevel frets. So yeah. anyhow. So I'll continue doing this and um until I get this area right in here to match the rest of this up here. Now from the 12th fret on, I'm not too con super concerned with it being level just yet. I'm gonna I'm gonna focus on it individually after I get everything else leveled to you know, sand in some fall away here. And um, it is a nice gradual fall off and that just, once again, that's for like playability. It makes it comfortable for the player. So um, yeah. Stay tuned, um, and I'll come come back once we get everything nice and level here, and, and show you with the, the single pass with the sharpie how how that looks. So later. Okay, guys, back again. Um, hope the camera can pick that up, but I've made one single pass now that I've got everything level. I mark it off with the sharpie again, and it's taken an equal amount off of all of these frets within within reason. Up from here on, like I said, from here on on down, from 12th fret down. I gotta do a little manual sanding layer. I'm not gonna bore you guys with that on video. It's just for comfort. It doesn't, you know, that doesn't affect the, the overall leveling. So these frets are level. So they're, this is where you wanna be at. The next step is the crowning process. And uh, I'll catch that on, um, on the next video. Yeah, so, cause I gotta get reset up for that. But, but anyhow, this is what it looks like. I'm gonna walk you guys through this kind of up close here. This is what it looks like when you're taking equal amounts off of all of your frets. With one, just one, all I did was pull the, the sanding beam one time, not back and forth, just one pull and one push, and it's taking the equal amount off the frets. So these frets are level. It's a good thing. So I'll catch you in the next video. Later. Okay, folks, back again. Now we're going to go through the crowning process. I got everything leveled where, I, where I'm happy with it. Um, I'm still kind of on the fence here. I'm going to keep reiterating that. I know you guys are probably getting tired of hearing it, but I really just don't know if we're going to have enough material left in this area here. Even though it's level, it's kind of an optical illusion type thing, but like these frets are shallow now, so they're not, they don't have a lot of height to them. I don't know if this is going to end up being a refret or not until I get, I got to go through all the steps. I got to crown these and I got to polish them and then I got to, got to see where we're at. And, uh, it's just it's up, kind of up in there. But we're going to go through the motions anyhow. Um, this is a Stuart McDonald 1602. I don't know if the camera gets that or not. Uh, maybe not. Anyhow, uh, three corner file. And I use this to do my fret work. We, what we want is to have just a tiny little line, like a very fine line at the top of the fret after we get through filing. That's what we call the land or the landing. So we make, make little passes with the file in this manner. And removing a very small amount of material in each pass. Everybody, all the people that I know that have done this, this work or do this work, my Luthier friends, they all have their own methods and their own tools that they like to use for this. Me, this is the way I do it because I can I can I feel like I have a greater control over what I'm doing um, I can feel what I'm doing in this file now if you're thinking about getting into this kind of work and you want to make your own it's not that hard you go to the hardware store and you pick up the sorting of files, you can make your own tools for doing this work. I've got a few right here I can show you. Here's the first fret file I ever made. And I still use it from time to time too. Um, I, I like I like this one because it's a much 
uh, more controllable file than this one. This one hogs off the material. The teeth are kind of more aggressive. <laughs> yeah, so I have to go real slow with this one because I didn't, to be totally honest, I was learning great work when I made this. So I know a lot more now than I did then. Yeah, so you can make, they're you know, six bucks at the hardware store. What you have to do is you have to grind the edge of the file down and polish it smooth. That way it doesn't mar up the fretboard when you come across or it'd be digging into the fretboard otherwise. Slow, meticulous job. Fret work is not cheap. Good fret work is not cheap. And this is why good fret work takes time. It costs a lot of money to buy up the tooling that you need to make the tooling that you need to do this work. And I'm going to do roughly half the frets and I'll flip the guitar around and I'll do the other half because the way that my bench is set up, I can't access the other side. I've got a small workshop right now. And in the future, I hope to have a bigger workspace and that way I can make a proper neck jig and work all the way around the instrument without ever having to move it. One of these days, as they say, you gotta crawl before you can walk. We're in that crawl stage right now for sure. And I'm okay with that. Slow and steady wins the race. I'll do three or four of these and let you guys see what I'm talking about when I say the land. Filing these frets to a proper landing or a land, landing them in. Some frets you gotta get rough with them, some of them just smooth as butter. This one wanted to be a little, a little stubborn here. Okay. Head here and see. See that just the finest little, might even be able to get the magnifying glass over this and show you guys. Yeah, much better. Just the finest little line down through the middle of the fret. You know, there's what we started with. There's what we have now. That's what you want. So, hopefully that translated right on this video camera. I'm still in the beginning stages of this stuff too, so. Crawl before you walk, people. Let's go. Posting or building this video up to one. I'm gonna make this all one big video and put it on Facebook if I can. I'm definitely gonna put it on YouTube. And um, yeah, I hope you guys are enjoying this I, as much as I am. I love making making videos, but I, I enjoy doing this work even more. This is this is comforting to me. This is almost therapy. So thanks for watching and stay tuned. All right, guys, back again. Now we get all the frets um, leveled and crowned. The next step is to dress the fret ends. I figured also I'd take just a minute and talk to you about these files again. I kind of briefly touched on this before, but these three corner files, that's a small one. There I'd use it on like mandolins and you know, little steel guitars, tiddly bows, things like that for their tiny little frets. This is my go-to file for fret work, for fret crowning. It's the medium, Steam Mac medium uh, three corner file. Here's another one that I made. Now this is, the bulk of the work gets done in this shop with, with, with this guy. Like, this is the one I go to. It's very similar to the one I had earlier. And I've already put it away. But, but I've made, um, I do most of my fret crowning with this file. Very inexpensive. Um, probably got $10 in this file altogether. And it's a Nicholson file, so it's a brand file. But once again, you ground the edges down smooth so they don't mark the fretboard and rock and roll with it, man. The next step here is to dress these fret ends. Uh, you kind of want them to have like a 
rounded, we call them hot dog frets. I know it's funny, but it is what it is. Hot dog shaped frets. They have the rounded edges. That feels really good to, to you when you're playing. You don't, it's almost like it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't even, there's no edge to the fret. You don't feel the edge of the fret, and that's kind of the whole idea. <clears throat> this file is, I don't know if the camera's going to get that or not, maybe, uh, maybe not. Anyhow, it's, it's, it's rounded on one edge and flat on the other. And what we do with that is we take this file and we roll the edges in like so. Just gently create a nice little rounded profile like so. And I work my way all the way down and I flip the, you notice the guitar is in a different orientation this time too. Kind of round them around like this. I'll do a few and I'll let you see them and you get a good side by side comparison between thread ends that are dressed and ones that are not. Guys, this is why this stuff is time consuming. Uh, it costs a lot of money in tooling, you know, and it takes years to learn how to do this and get, get a feel for what you're doing what you're looking for on this stuff, what feels right you know, to, to most guitar players. You're always going to have those unique individuals who have, they're just heavy handed, um, different, just different guitar players, different kinds of people that, that uh, require very unique setups. You know, I've had some and uh, some guys commissioned me to do work on their stuff, and they're they're using like you know thirteens and tuning a whole step down, and you know which is not unorthodox by any means, but it, it does change things. So yeah, so I've got a few of these done now. Let me get you in closer. Let me see what's going on here. So if you look real close in the magnifying glass. Let me find something to point and poke with here. Makes it a little easier to make my point. You notice how that one is nice and round? Well, up here, these are all rounded now. Like all up to here. Now, you notice that edge right there. That's what you feel when you're playing the guitar. You don't want that. You want it to be nice and round. So that's what we do here. We, we get it as good as we can get it. We get... We get up under the magnifying glass. I'm actually wearing glasses at the moment. Like, my eyes aren't what they used to be, but age has its way, you know. Um, time has its way, rather. But anyhow, yeah. Nice, round, hot dog frets, man. That's what we that's what we want to do. So, that's what this little segment was about. And uh, it's coming along nicely. Believe it or not, I think we're going to be okay with just leveling these frets. Uh, I was real careful about how much material I took off here kind of feels okay so we'll just well, we'll know more about it once we get it strung up and play on it a little bit but it's coming along nice man stay tuned guys I'll, I'll i'll keep throwing video your way on this one this is a big deal to me i want this to guitar to be not my crowning achievement so far so i want this thing to to be right um not just not just because who's who this thing belongs to but but i'm getting as close as i can possibly get like right on the edge of needing to do like a refret and neck reset and I'm trying to if I can if I can make this guitar play good and sound good and last for four or five more years without needing a neck reset or a refret then that's a testament to you know where I'm at with what I know about this stuff so it's a big deal to me so stay tuned I appreciate you guys watching leave comments you know questions whatever thanks stay tuned man later all right guys back again um the next step after we dress the ends with the fret end dressing file we go on to polishing the frets and now that we've got them all level and we've checked that with our fret rocker um made sure we've kind of you know i'll show you we double check nothing's rocking Everything's nice and level and crowned and we're ready to go on the polishing. Now, everybody's got their own methods for this. My methods are, 
I use 600 and 800 grit sandpaper. Man, sorry about the music. I didn't realize it was that loud. Um, and there are other ways to do this, but this is the way that I that I learned to do it, and it just kind of works. You take the sandpaper and you put it in between your fingers like this. Kind of run your finger around it, and all you're doing is you're going to go back and forth across the fretboard, and the the sandpaper is going to go up and down over the fret and it's going to naturally kind of roll the top of that fret over as it's polishing it. Eventually you'll end up, right now we have like a pyramid shape, sharp edges and a rounded top or kind of, um, flat top, flat edges, more rounded on the top and on the edges, so like a pyramid shape. We're going to end up with a nice half moon um, rounded top after we do this. So we start with 600 grit. And we just go over. I keep doing this step until I see all the red gone from that that was left from from um, leveling and crowning on the edges. I go and make sure to pay close attention to the edge, the bevel of the fret. Make sure it's good and clean. Cause now's the time to get that stuff off of there. It's easier to do it now than later. there okay then we go on to 800 grit step which is the actual polishing polishing where I take a Dremel tool and some jewelers rouge and I polish it and I'm not going to bore you guys with that but um, I will get video after I'm done with that and I'll uh, show what we got for a finished product there stay tuned guys <laughs> 